Hello, my name is Stephanie and I am the HVAC merchant for HD Supply. We have a slide deck here that will review some changes in the HVAC market for 2016. The first change we want to review is about R22 allocations. In 2014, the EPA laid out a plan from 2015 to 2020 on R22 allocations with a decrease in about 6 million pounds per year of allocated R22 to the U.S. market. In 2016, we will go from 22 million pounds to 17.6 million pounds allocated for the U.S. market. Right now, the demand is estimated in the market at about 50 to 60 million pounds for 2015, down a little bit from 2014 estimate of 60 to 65 million pounds. The biggest thing that you'll notice on this graph is that it hits zero in 2020. So there are only four more summers where the U.S. market will be allocated any R22 refrigerant. HD Supply encourages customers to try to find a transition plan for their properties off of R22 based equipment and onto other alternates, either R22 alternates or R410A equipment. To review the R22 alternate refrigerants, we have made a graph to show the difference between R22, R438A, or street named MO99, and R407C. If you look at R22, the price is a little bit higher than the other two refrigerants, but it does not void the warranty. That's the biggest thing about R22. If the system is still under warranty, you will want to use R22 in that system. Otherwise, you could void warranties with any other alternate used in a condensing unit system. R438A, or MO99, is a little bit reduced in price. The biggest difference is that HFCs have to come in 25-pound jugs instead of 30-pound jugs like HCFCs. That is a Department of Transportation rule and will affect all HFCs going forward. If you divide the 260, which is the current price of MO99, by the 22, 25 pounds, you get roughly $10.40 per pound. And if it takes about six pounds to fill a condenser, the cost to fill that condenser would be $62.40. This will work on mineral or POE oil, and that is very critical because some compressors in condensing units are now coming with the newer generation of POE oil where the former compressors were coming with mineral oil. That change occurred in Copeland compressors around January 1st of 2014 and was a rolling change with the manufacturers. So please make sure to check the compressor plate to see if it is a compressor using POE oil or mineral oil. Your third option that HD Supply sells is R407C. R407C is significantly less than the other two refrigerants, at a, coming in at about $150. It is also a 25-pound jug, and so it's about $36 to fill a condensing unit. The problem is, as you can see on the slide, we've highlighted the things to be aware of in red. It only works with POE uh, oil, so you would want to check for sure what the compressor is running on to make sure that R407C would be compatible with the oil that the compressor is using. These are all estimates on price as price for refrigerants can change drastically um, and please make sure that you only use alternate refrigerants in a condensing unit that is out of warranty as these products other than R22 would void warranties on condensing equipment. In 2015, new regional standards for condensing equipment hit the U.S. market. If you look at the map, you will see the northern portion of the country will stay on 13 SEER product. The southeast will move to a 14 SEER platform and the Southwest will move to a 14 SEER platform with an EER rating component, depending on the tonnage of the unit. That is for all condensing equipment. For all heat pumps and all packaged units, the regulation moved from 13 SEER to 14 SEER across the country. Now, there are some updates for 2016 that are very important. 
the DOE has revised the ability for manufacturers to produce dry 22 equipment, and dry 22 equipment will no longer be allowed to be produced for the United States market come February 1st of 2016. That is a new law that passed in December of 2015 and again will become effective February 1st of 2016. The product that was produced in a 13 SEER platform for the Southeast and Southwest markets prior to January 1st of 2015 is allowed to have an installation date on or before June 30th of 2016. After June 30th of 2016, 13 SEER equipment will no longer be legal to install in the southern region, southwest and southeast. Now, for the southwest, EER rating is captured at a 95 degree ambient, whereas SEER ratings are captured at an 80 degree ambient making the Southwest units a little bit more expensive and a little bit more efficient given the fact that they have EER ratings they also have to hit to be installed properly in the Southwest region. In the next few slides, we will discuss options for different types of changeouts for equipment. There are a couple different options that properties can do to make sure that they continue to keep their HVAC equipment up and running correctly and smoothly. The first option, which is just a compressor changeout, this would be a repair option instead of a replace option. And so we will walk you through some estimated costs and some information that you would want to know when changing from R22 based platforms to r 4 a based platforms. So the first scenario, compressor changeout, if we estimate that it's going to cost about four hours worth of labor at $15 an hour, that would be $60. The equipment that would need to be purchased would be a compressor, a filter dryer, and then you would need to fill that piece of equipment back with R22. Um, and then the tools that are listed are tools that would be needed for any typical type of installation. If you're going to do a proper installation on a condensing equipment, this would be the set of tools that your shop would want to have. So if you look at the subtotal, you see $2,600. However, the reoccurring total, once you have all of those tools in your shop, the reoccurring total on a compressor changeout would be roughly $475. And again, all costs associated in this presentation are going to be estimates based on market costs at the current time. Scenario number two would be changing out a system with a dry 22 condenser change out. Now the key about this slide is based on the previous slide, we talked about dry 22 condensing units no longer being allowed to be manufactured after February 1st. So this slide is very much so while supplies last in terms of being able to acquire a dry 22 condensing unit. The labor on this would be a little less because you're just taking out the condensing unit and putting in a new one. Uh, you would need to purchase the condenser and you would need to fill that condenser with R22 since it is a dry product and does not ship with refrigerant. The estimated recurring total would be about $775 in this example. Scenario number three is a scenario where a customer would change from R22 to R4 a leaving the indoor coil as is and only changing an R4 a 14 sear unit on the outside. This scenario is applicable for the southeast customers based on regulation. The labor would be about four hours uh, at $15 an hour. The condenser and the flush kit. The flush kit is now a new line on this spreadsheet because they ask that you flush the indoor coil and the line sets because for moving from R22 based refrigerant to r 4 a based refrigerant, you're moving from mineral oil to POE oil in the system. And you would want to make sure that your indoor coil and that your line sets are free of any oils before attaching a new condensing unit. So the flush kit is needed to make sure that the oils are out of the system when you uh, install this new condensing unit. 
and you look at the tools, the tools have only two products listed with costs, a recovery cylinder and a manifold. When you change a shop over from R22 to r 4 a the only two pieces of equipment that would need to be purchased are recovery cylinders because you never want to mix refrigerant and manifolds because manifolds uh, read the, temp the pressures of the refrigerant and the pressure of R22 is different than the pressure of r 4 a So you would want a manifold that reads the pressures of r 4 a in this scenario, your reoccurring costs are $795, roughly, and this would be an option, again, for the Southeast customers, as this is a 14-seer example. Scenario number four is the scenario for Southwest customers. This is a scenario where the customer takes out the existing condensing unit on the outside, leaving the existing coil, and puts in a 14 sear 12.2 EER system. Now we talked in the regulation slide about the EER and how that made an effect on the cost. When a condensing unit is between one and a half and three and a half tons, the EER needs to be 12.2 or greater. When the condensing unit is over three and a half tons, the EER needs to be 11.7. HD Supply has designated all of these condensing units in our catalog for the Southwest specifically to meet those EER ratings. In this scenario, since we are discussing a two-ton condensing unit, this condensing unit will meet a 12.2 EER standard. In this scenario, you have your labor at four hours, you have your condenser, and once again your flush kit, because you still want to flush the indoor evaporator coil and the line sets in this scenario. The estimated reoccurring total would be about $829 on this scenario. And again, because the EER rating for the Southwest the condensing unit is a little bit more expensive than in scenario three where it was just a 14 sear with no EER rating. In the last scenario we will discuss a full system change out. So change out of the condensing unit outside and the indoor evaporator coil on the inside. The labor will jump up to about six hours given the fact that you are redoing both outdoor and indoor components of the condensing system. You also would want to keep the flush kit on this scenario because you would still want to flush out the line sets of the oils that are currently in those line sets. This scenario will cost about $1,225 to complete but the good part about this scenario is that it gives you, it sets up the shop or the condensing equipment for the long term, as r 4 a will continue to be cheaper than R22 going forward and more available than R22. So this is a long-term type strategy, whereas a compressor changeout would be more short-term uh, strategy as you are repairing instead of replacing. Anytime you replace a condensing unit with an r 4 a condensing unit, you're replacing with a more long-term rather than a short-term strategy. In summary of the scenarios, we go from a compressor changeout in scenario one from about $475 all the way to a full system changeout where it's about $1,225. And the biggest difference is the type of longevity this plan has for a property. Whereas the compressor changeout is a shorter term type plan, the full system changeout will allow for a longer term plan in terms of moving off of R22 based equipment and onto R14 a based equipment. As R22 continues to rise, remember that repairing R22 equipment will become more expensive. And as r 4 a starts to phase in more into the market, you will see condensing unit costs drop a little bit because now that's what manufacturers are producing the most. 
A lot of customers have questions on quarter inch line sets because that was what was installed many years ago back in the 80s and 90s when condensing equipment was first being installed. Quarter inch line sets are approved on R410A condensing units in the following rates. One and a half ton units can have a 150 foot line set between the condenser and, and the air handler and two ton units can have up to 75 feet. Now it obviously depends on if there's any lift in terms of the condensing unit being below the air handler or vice versa. So online at our resources page you can find out more information or go to the manufacturer's websites and they can tell you what exactly is approved based on your model numbers. And remember New for 2016, production of Dry 22 products will cease as of February 1st of this year. Please remember properties should have a plan to transition off of R22 products and on to R410A based products. Additional resources are available at hdsupplysolutions.com under the Resources tab and in the HVAC category. Resources would include air handler compatibility with R4TNA, compressed gas and tank exchange information, EPA certifications for R22 purchases, information about Goodman systems, HVAC energy efficiency standards, HVAC FAQs, most commonly asked questions, reference guides, guides, warranty information, nomenclature, R22 alternate refrigerant information, R22 reclamation program and information, and how to find SEER ratings for AHRI certificates. All of this is included on our reference site in case you guys have any other questions. Thank you again for your time today and I hope you have a wonderful HVAC season.